Hi guys and welcome back to another What's For Dinner. My name is Crystal and before we get started we do have a request. If you enjoy watching What's For Dinner videos please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. For more What's For Dinners like this feel free to hit that subscribe button and don't forget you can always share this video with your friends, family and on your social media just by clicking the share button. So let's get started. So on this day I was going to make some spaghetti. I do make my own marinara sauce in the crock pot. I do have a video down in the description. I will put it so that you guys can go check it out. It's very easy. It's a dump and go recipe and I really like it. If you are on WW, this marinara sauce is zero points which is awesome and it does freeze pretty well. Please excuse my dirty dishes. My garbage disposal was not working on this day, hence why I had to make such an easy and quick meal. And my girls honestly really, really enjoy eating spaghetti. I just put this marinara sauce um, early in the morning and then just go as my day as it's cooking. I honestly did not use my crock pot before or a slow cooker. The only thing I used to use it before was to make nacho cheese. And last year I was able to try a couple of recipes that I've been enjoying. Um, I still prefer to cook on the stovetop, but there's just some dishes that do cook pretty quick um, pretty easy I'm sorry in my crock pot so right here I'm starting to do is boil some water for my noodles and I just add salt and then I'm going to be using these spaghetti noodles. I'm actually going to be using the whole spaghetti noodles because I do have family coming over on this day. And also too, when I make spaghetti, I usually make enough for leftovers. Um, I don't haven't said it lately in my what's for dinners, but we do eat our leftovers for lunches. My girls would take it for lunch. My husband sometimes if he has access to a microwave will take it for lunch. Um, and also too, spaghetti is just a quick, easy meal that I would definitely bulk it up and make it enough for two days. So each time I make spaghetti, I always make it a little bit different. Uh, this time I'm going to be using ground beef and I'm just using the ground beef that I get at Costco. And then I'm going to be adding two Italian uh, hot sausages to it. I think the next time I will add one. My girls didn't complain that it was spicy, but towards the end of it, I felt like there was a little kick. So definitely next time I will just add one and it'll just lower the points for me on WW. So before I used to cook everything separate, I would boil my pasta in a different pot and then cook my meat in a different pot and then throw in the sauce and then mix it together or have it separate. But I definitely do like the one pot method. I definitely take my time when I'm making spaghetti. It's such an easy meal, but what I've noticed is that if you take your time making it, let the meat cook slow, let the sauce cook slow, it just makes it taste so much better. And then I'm just adding my favorite seasonings. I love my Lori's garlic salt and I I love the Lori seasoned salt. I don't add too much because the Italian sausage already has enough salt in it. It's just adding it to flavor it. And then I also, um, you know us, we love our black pepper. Uh, so we love adding black pepper pretty much to everything that we cook. And then when I'm cooking meat, I love adding fresh garlic and I'm going to be using uh, my garlic press for this. I got this at Target. It is the OXO brand. That's one of my favorite kitchen tools because it's so easy to have fresh garlic on hand. And trust me when I say this, it makes a huge difference having fresh garlic uh, when you're cooking your meals. It just makes it so much flavorful and me not having to mince this makes it so much easier on me. So I'm going to let this finish cooking up, but if you're finding ways to save money, definitely spaghetti is a good way. I would just cut the meat portion in half. I did use about a pound of ground beef, um, but definitely I could use way less to save more money. Um, now I'm using a potato masher just to get it nice and grounded as much as I can. And then I do blend my sauce because I like it more smooth. And then what I like about making marinara sauce on the same day that I make spaghetti is that I can add as much as I can. But if I did have to defrost it, it defrosts pretty quick. Um, so I'm just going to let that cook for a good 30 minutes on low and just let the meat and the sauce come together. And it just, it's so flavorful. And then I don't measure seasonings. I taste as I go. And then now I'm going to be adding the pasta inside there before I would do it separate. But I feel like this way, it just lets everything combine together and it just brings so much flavor and it's so much easier to serve this way as well. to be
And this is what it looks like all plated up. I made a quick side salad on the side and then I had my spaghetti and my garlic bread. This is my plate. I did not add Parmesan cheese to it, but definitely if you like Parmesan cheese or some chili flakes, definitely add whatever you like, work with what you got. And then I'm having my sparkling water and then I added a little bit of this balsamic vinaigrette dressing and that was dinner for this day. So on this day I'm going to be making some chipotle bowls. In reality I made chicken, rice and beans. My plate was a chipotle bowl and I'm going to show you what I do. I did have some chicken in my freezer, chicken breast that was already marinated. Normally I don't like buying meats that are already marinated because I can't control the seasoning. Sometimes they're too salty or sometimes the seasoning is not enough. But on this day it was actually really good. It was like a nice marinade so I was able to cook that up and then I'm just cooking the chicken breast. You'll notice that this chicken breast wasn't ready to uh, flip over. If you're cooking meat and you notice that your meat is not ready to flip over it's because it's not ready to flip over. Just give it some time. I'm just adding a little bit of more oil spray and then eventually it'll be able to flip. So now I'm going to be making the corn salsa. Uh, I did get a request a while back to make a corn salsa. I couldn't find the comment anymore, so I do apologize if you requested this, but I'm going to be showing you how to make it. It is super, super simple. So you're going to start by needing some cilantro, half of an onion. You can use with whatever onion you have. I always say work with what you got. By that, I'm meaning whatever you have in your fridge. Uh, I'm going to be using a lemon. You can use a lemon or a lime, and then a tomato, salt, and pepper. We love our pepper, so feel free to add pepper if you like it too. If not, go ahead and leave it out and then I'm using canned corn you can use the steam the steam microwavable ones just steam it and then let it cool down so it's not hot going in with the cilantro so then I'm gonna start off by uh, chopping up a tomato and I'm just giving it a rough chop there's some days where I like uh, my tomatoes and onions to be very small but this day was pretty late I was already in my comfy clothes Pokemon gotta catch them all um, so I know I love Pokemon anyways um, I'm just chopping up my tomatoes <coughs> pretty small no not small I'm just chopping them however I wanted to on this day and then adding salt and pepper as I go I do want to layer this up the canned corn that I'm using does not have any salt at all so then I'm making sure to add a little bit of pink salt and then I'm adding a little bit of black pepper if you don't like black pepper that's fine and then I've noticed every time that I've used these grinders um, my pinky's always up so make sure when you're using a salt and pepper grinder that your pinky's up because if it's not up then guess what you're doing it wrong Okay, so then after I've added my salt and pepper, all fancy, I'm now going to be adding my tomato. And then, yes, I'm sorry, my camera was not focusing again. But anyways, I'm adding that tomato in. If you want to add more tomato, go ahead and add an extra one. I think just one was fine, definitely. I will be adding the measurements down below in the description. And then each time I add in the tomato or add in an extra ingredient, I'm making sure to give it a mix and then adding salt and pepper to taste. And then now I'm going to be adding half of a white onion. If you want to use the red onion to make it more colorful, definitely go ahead. Use whatever onion and preference you have. Or definitely go ahead and add whatever you want. When I say work with what you got, I mean by work with your budget, work with what you have in your fridge, and also work with what uh, you have on hand. Many times I have seen recipes where I almost want to make it, but I don't have one or two ingredients. And some recipes you have to, you know, go by the book and have to do it. And some of them you can really switch them up and do what you want. If you only have a red onion, but see that I'm using a white onion, go ahead and use that red onion, yellow onion. Use whatever you have. Feel free to make it your own. That's what I like to say. So now I'm going to be adding the onion. And once again, I'm going to give it a quick mix. After this, I'm going to be chopping up the cilantro and then giving it another mix and seasoning of salt and pepper. And then I'm going to be squeezing a lemon. You can use lemon or lime, whatever you 
your preferences. If you don't like it very lemony, um, is that a word? Yes, okay, we're gonna go with it. Um, I would use uh, half of the lemon, but if you like it with a lot of flavor, definitely add the full one like I did. And then I wanna let this sit down and all the flavors to marinate a little bit. So I'm gonna, once this is all done, I'm gonna set this aside and put it in the fridge for a good 20 minutes just so everything can combine. And pretty much, like I said, this is a pico de gallo with corn in it. And you can definitely add this on top of salads and tacos, whatever you would normally add a pico de gallo. You can add this, it just has the twist of corn. And then once again, if you are on WW, this is zero points. So now I'm going to be plating up my bowl and I start by adding some cooked pinto beans. If you guys are looking for a video how to make the easiest pinto beans, I will put it down in the description. I added just a little bit of rice on my on top of the beans and then some lettuce. My husband and my girls just had the chicken, the rice, and the beans on the side. I'm the one that had it like a chipotle bowl and this is just a quick easy meal and I just love that it comes in a bowl. This is what the chicken looks like. It's all chicken breast. It's all fully cooked and then I just slice mine up and then I add it to there and then I'm gonna be adding that corn salsa and I add a good healthy amount of it because it's just so good and it's an easy way to flavor up uh, salads tacos or just this chipotle bowl and then on top I'm gonna be adding uh, this salsa molcajete that I made I am coming out with a video soon of how I make it it is so much flavorful but if you guys need a salsa uh, video that you guys would like to see I will put down in the description uh, another what's for dinner that I showed how to make a salsa that was really really good and then I'm gonna be adding just a little sprinkle of Monterey Jack cheese on top And this is what it looks like all plated up. I really enjoy eating these foods because everything is just in one plate and it's very delicious. Nothing left you thinking. So on this day, I'm going to be using my slow cooker again and using these slow cooker liners for easy cleanup. I'm going to be making a chicken noodle soup. This recipe was so easy to make and very delicious. You can make this the night um, ahead or also in the morning, which is what I did. And so I still have my Pokemon shirt on. I did this early in the morning. And then I did see this video um, from this sweet mama that I really enjoy watching her channel and I know you guys will too. So I will be putting her video down in the description so go check it out as well as the measurements that I use in this recipe. Um, the only difference that I did was that I didn't add salt. Instead of salt I used my favorite seasonings that I normally like to add to chicken. So definitely you can use the same seasonings or use the salt. I will be putting... Um, the measurements that I use down in the description and also her video so you guys can go check it out. I started by adding three chicken breasts and these breasts were skinless and boneless. So then I added some of my favorite seasonings and I just sprinkled very little bit and then off camera towards the end I did add um, extra broth to it because my girls really the only part that they will eat of the chicken noodle is the chicken, the noodles, and the broth. Their broth is their favorite part so I did have to add extra for our family. But like I said this was very delicious. So then I added a little bit of Lori seasoned salt, very little bit of the garlic salt, very little bit of the chicken Goya uh, seasoning and the other seasoning for chicken. Uh, just very light and then I started by putting two bay leaves and here I have some oregano some thyme and some parsley But like I said, I will be putting the measurements down below and this was pretty much a dump and go recipe Which is something that I like 
Um, I am challenging myself to try new slow cooker and crock pot recipes. It's not something that I'm used to before, but last year I was able to try a couple of new ones and I'm really liking the easy process of it. So here I am dumping six cups of chicken broth and by making a chicken broth, I use one cup of water to one teaspoon of chicken bouillon. So then I just added six and six to even that out. But towards the end when I was ready to serve this, I did add another six uh, cups just for the preference of my family and then I'm gonna be adding garlic I'm using my garlic press like I said this is my favorite kitchen tool just quick and easy and then I also cook this on high I do want to say that before I forget uh, for about five hours and it was so so good um, and then here I'm gonna be adding an onion the recipe did call for a diced onion but I added the onion whole and then right there I use a chicken bone leftover from our chicken from our chipotle bowls. I did have some chicken shredded up already cooked but I ended up using that shredded chicken for something else and since I had the bone I said might as well add it in for more flavor and then here I have five carrots chopped up and three celeries chopped up and I'm adding that to our bowl as well. I mean our crock pot sorry. And then I'm just giving everything a good good mix. I set it on high for about five hours but if you have more time and do this overnight you can cook this on low for eight to ten hours as the recipe said in the video so about after four hours i noticed that my uh, crock pot was already boiling it was ready to go so i said let me cook the egg noodles separate i wouldn't recommend adding the pasta to the crock pot it's just easier to do it separate so i just boiled some water, added salt, and then following the cooking directions for these egg noodles. So after my egg noodles were cooked, I did start taking out the chicken breast and the onion and the bay leaves out and also took out that bone since we do not longer need the onion and the bone. If you like the onion diced up, definitely go ahead and do that. I just didn't feel like dicing it up because I knew my girls would start picking it out and it would be easier to pick out the carrots and the celeries. They're very picky on veggies, but on this day I was said, I told myself it's totally fine because most of the nutrients and flavor is already in the broth and that's their favorite part anyways so right here the uh the chicken breast is very very flavorful and juicy which was i was very happy i was afraid that it would taste flavorless and dry but it was really really good and like i said make sure don't forget to take out those bay leaves they're in there for flavor but not to eat and then i just cut up the chicken it was pretty much falling off and falling apart because it was cooked on for so long and then I just cut it up this way it was very easy to cut up I didn't worry about shredding it too fine because I knew it was going to be in there for a couple of hours on low after this I switched it and I put it to low um I knew it was going to finish shredding up after cooking in that nice broth so I just gave it a quick little rough little cut and then a quick chop I'm sorry and then um threw it back into my crock pot So this week's what's for dinner, I wasn't able to show you guys a vegan recipe or a vegetarian or a plant-based, but I am working on that. So thank you guys so much for being patient with me, but definitely you can switch this up for the chicken for a potato or another root vegetable that you would like. I feel like it would still be very flavorful and then just use a different kind of pasta and as well uh, use like a, a vegetarian or a vegan uh, broth definitely it's very very good and I feel like you'll still get a great flavor with potatoes or a different root vegetable that you prefer
So after serving it, I did add another six cup of broth and an extra of seasonings. I will be putting down the measurements down below, but this chicken noodle soup was so good. Definitely you can freeze the leftovers once it cools down and have it ready to go. I added my cooked noodles on top and this was so delicious and this is what we had on this day. So on this day, my mother-in-law invited us over and we had some chicken mole that is a flavorful sauce with some Mexican red rice. And then she also had refried beans and then also some tortillas on the side. This is what my plate looks like all plated up. It is so, so good and one of my husband's favorite dish. So on this day we went over to some families and we had different meals. We had brought pizza, so I was serving up my girls some pizza. My mother-in-law had made some ribs, some baked potatoes, there was chicken, there was salsa. That's my mother-in-law that I always talk about, my father-in-law, he is so funny. Um, we have some chicken, we have some carne asada, and it is just such a great time spending time with my family, that is my uncle and my aunt and then my comadre and then uh just nephews and nieces were all being loud my cousins um it's just it's just a great time eating and spending time with family yeah you don't have a choice i got this yummy i want to eat a okay oh yeah Raspberries? Raspberries? Oh, oh, those up there. The red ones? They're not raspberries, but. Let me help this guy because this guy is being slow. Yeah. yeah it that is. is always helping a cook. And that is a good cook sometimes. Sometimes, not all the time. No, yeah. Very good cook. Just like his mama. Uh oh, got the copyright. You got a sleeve or you got scratching? This is a ranchera to me. You know that? Oh, a ranchera? That's good that you told Oh. It's expensive. Yeah, like seven pounds, eight eight dollars a pound or something. Y la marinada or? Yeah, they 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 bought it marinated. Oh, they bought it marinated. The way you look like it. Marinated. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, so we are just cooking some carne asada that was already marinated if you guys are interested in a video i will put it down in the description how i make an easy two ingredient marinade you guys can go check out that video but definitely if you want to add more uh, seasonings more flavor to that simple easy marinade i would add orange juice i would add um, a beer and different ways to flavor it up uh, and so so good but definitely go check out that video if you guys want to learn how to make this easy simple carne asada and i love spending time with family it's kind of like an all day kind of thing all day kind of eating just being together and enjoying serving everybody plates and stuff um here they are cooking those onions those onions are so so good you let them cook up and they are so delicious if you like onions and then we're making a combination of everything like i said there was ribs there was baked potato there's pizza there's carne asada, there's chicken, there is also hot dogs, and it's just a combination of spending time with family and hanging out and just having a really good time and laugh.
So I hope you guys enjoyed this what's for dinner video. I want to say thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it this far in the video, thank you so much. I do have a family channel that I will be sharing right now. You can go check that out. If you guys did enjoy this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. For more videos like this, feel free to hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys on the next one. You look so beautiful And I'm so lucky to be yours